North Carolina Central and Maroon. Opening tap, and here we go. North Carolina Central trying for that first road win of the season. It is 2-5 and five in the year, 0-5 oh in road games, and continuing a long stretch here of road games here early in the season as Randy Miller fires his first shot, and down it goes for three, his first points of the game. Well, there's the guy shooting 29% from beyond the arc this season, and way to get off to a hot start, and that's what Coach Moten wants to see from him to try to be that number one guy on this team. Now Upstate trying to bounce back from that loss on Saturday against Furman as Mozone misfires on the three. Offensive rebound, Hodge, and he scores Upstate's first two. The correction, it's Mr. Goodlow. My apologies, Mr. Goodlow with his first two points of the game. 3-2, NC Central in the lead by one. And stepping out of bounds was Alex Caldwell, first turnover on NC Central. And you love seeing Mr. Goodlow being able to get out there and be very active. Missed last season, or most of last season, with a torn ACL. So Coach Dickerson is really expecting him to have a big first half of the season this year. Here's Aldrich surveying the defense in the Mozone's hands, playing in his senior campaign. There's Ganey, the freshman, and the Big South Freshman of the Week. Knocks in his first two. Yeah, and he's asking for a foul right there as well. <laughs> the young freshman, he wants to get even more opportunities to score, but he's shooting 50% from the field right now, and that's really unheard of as a true freshman coming in and having that type of uh, hot shooting to start the season. And Caldwell fouled up front by Jalen Brazil. That's his first. It's an NC Central team that last year, Rich, uh, five and nine, only played in 14 games, was shut down for nearly seven weeks due to COVID. And uh, this team just had no continuity, continuity or rhythm last year. Yeah, when you have a situation where it's a span of 48 straight days where you don't play basketball, that's very difficult. And no one, they only practiced 13 times all of last year. So you can't really get a gauge of type, what type of team you have at that point. Good defense by Upstate. Randy Miller throws it away. Second turnover on North Carolina Central. And this is what Coach Dickerson wanted to see from his team early on. This is what we didn't see against Furman. And you see a lot more energy right now for the Spartans. Upstate by one. Mozone from the wing. Leaves it short. Offensive rebound, Ganey. Here's Goodlow. Off the mark on that three, Marquis Maltzby skies high for the rebound for North Carolina Central. Here's Miller, step back jump shot. Fight for the rebound, cleared by Aldrich. And here come the Spartans in the lead by one, 4-3. And Aldrich leading uh, the second in, lead, in the lead on rebounding for the Spartans. He's always crashing the boards hard. Ganey short on that three, crashing the rebound were the Spartans, but it goes out of bounds, and it goes back over to NC Central. And we talked to uh, Coach Lavelle Moten of North Carolina Central before the game, asked him, what do you like best about this team? It's brand new, basically, and he said, this team is still trying to figure things out. Yes, exactly, and that's why I think it's hard for him to say what he likes best, other than it is a blank canvas so to speak and he's trying to get a better understanding to see what guys are going to be true leaders on this team and obviously again we know that Randy Miller is going to be expected to carry a heavy load. Maltzby missing the three here comes Brazil in transition. Ozone the senior he's 0 for 3 from the perimeter here tonight so far and the rebound by the Eagles, trailing upstate 4-3 here in the first half as Monroe goes inside. Good block by upstate and taken away by Mozone. Good defense by both there with uh, Mozone and Aldridge there, double team. Mr. Goodlow score the basket and one. Mr. Goodlow with his second basket, his fourth point. He'll head to the line for a three-point opportunity. And this is Mr. Goodlow at his best. You can see the size that he has, and he can get to the basket and penetrate, and he's strong enough to stay there with the contact and still finish. And that's what you got to love about Mr. Goodlow. Again, especially coming off that torn ACL, especially when you're losing players like a Tommy Bruner, you know, those type of guys from last year, you need somebody like that. And he's been able to step up so far. Missing the free throw, offensive rebound, though, by Ganey. And the shot clock resets to 20. Here's Jalen Brazil's 
freshman point guard starting early on this season for Upstate. Into the other freshman's hands in Ganey, the Big South freshman of the week. Shot clock at five, Brazil with three. Mozone has to put it up. Off the mark, rebound knocked away out of bounds off of North Carolina Central. And it goes, stays with Upstate and the shot clock resets to 20. And that was just not the position that Mozone wanted to be. Didn't have his feet really set with the shot clock getting ready to expire there, but great heads up play by Aldridge. Nick Alves into the game, inbounding for Upstate. He had 16 points all in the second half. It is uh, last game on Saturday versus Berman. He made seven of eight shots in the game. He has the ball right now. In his first minutes of the game here so far tonight. Shot clock inside of 10. Brazil, gaining. Pass knocked away. His nickname playing was Poetry in Moten, because I'm telling you, he could play. Dalvin White into the game, beats the shot clock. Buzzer misses the shot, and the rebound by North Carolina Central. And a steal by Dalvin White, racing down the floor, hangs in the air, can't hit the shot. Offensive rebound by Mozone, and he turns it over. First turnover on Upstate. Here's Alex Caldwell. They move it around the perimeter. Miller slips and falls. Turnover on North Carolina Central. Numbers for Upstate. Mozone, a three. Puts it in. And that's where Mozone wants to be able to catch in transition like that. He had his feet set. Shot clock was obviously not in uh, the situation of expiring there, coming down in transition, and great job for Dalvin White to be able to find him. Took a while for uh, Mozone to get his rhythm going, but now he has his first points, makes the shot, and gives Upstate the six-point lead. So North Carolina Central will inbound right in front of us. Here's Alex Caldwell, starting point guard for the squad over to Miller's hands into Eric Boone, who's checked into the game for the first time tonight. Rising and firing in a three is Alex Caldwell. Rich, he's shooting 48% from downtown this year. And I would imagine Coach Dickerson's going to come out of that zone pretty quickly that he just <laughs> employed there. When you have somebody like Caldwell to be able to knock it down beyond the arc like that, it's tough to stay in that zone. Cartier Jernigan in the game for the first time. Into Mozone's hands. Here's White. Quick shoot. Free. And it goes in for Dalvin White. He is shooting 53% from downtown this year. That's his ninth three of the season. And you love to see these guys when they're just in the rhythm of their offense. And it comes naturally that way. And that's what you want when you're shooting these three-pointers like that. You want it to be in the natural aspect of the offense and not forced. And most times when you can do that, you're going to score. Caldwell, the floater, no. Upstate crashing the rebounds and stepping out of bounds was Upstate. Stays with North Carolina Central. Shot clock resets to 20. Now Coach Moten said that uh, you know he had a lot of super seniors coming back. They were like 24, 25 years old. And he said, guys, it's not fair for me to keep you in school and coaching you. You need to get on with your lives and, uh, and uh, continue your careers and not let me hold you back. And that's why he had to rebuild the program from the ground up, uh, getting 12 new players in here, nine freshmen, three, or making a nine transfers and three freshmen. And it's going to take some time for this team to gel. Oh, it definitely is. And especially, you know, considering that they really just started to be able to have an offseason. As you can see right here, a foul ended up being called on Mozone, just reaching back in after uh, they were able to get that steal by Nicholas uh, Fennell there. And you have to look at it from a perspective of that. Even as they got together, they really even didn't have a true offseason either because everybody was so new. So it's, it's really difficult for the team to really – you know, understand the culture that Coach Moten has and who's going to be the leaders, who's going to be the vocal guys on the team. So it takes a little bit of time for that to develop. Here's Miller. That's a deep three, and it's good by Randy Miller, his second three of the game. Sharp shooter from Odenton, Maryland, shooting, like Rich said, 29% from the 
three-point line this year. <laughs> but he's coming out firing today. And again, this is an interesting situation with Randy Miller. He's coming back. This is his second time around playing for Coach Moten and the Eagles. And here come the Eagles down three, trying to chip away at the lead here against USC Upstate. Eric Boone finds Miller, hit a deep three a moment ago. Here's Caldwell. Off the mark on that three, offensive rebound Boone. Caldwell again, missing again. And the rebound stays with North Carolina Central again. North Carolina Central, you can see they're active on the board as well right now and staying in a situation where just these loose balls seem to be going their way right now. Miller again from deep, this time short. Offensive rebound, Boone, and he loses it. Turnover on North Carolina Central, foul on the Eagles as well. And I think if your coach Moten, he's going to tell Randy Miller that that's a shot, you just go ahead and shoot. Don't sit there and hesitate, as you can see here uh, still uh, by the Spartans there and get the foul. And that's what Dalvin White also brings to this team, just a heady type of player, and he is always in position and being able to have a knack for finding the ball. Kadarius Smith off the bench, hits his first shot. He's been known to be a good field goal shooting guy, shooting 52% this year so far. Last year, he shot 71% from the floor. Here's Fennell, too strong, and it hits the uh, wire up above the goal, and it goes back over to USC Upstate. You know, Rich, uh, these two teams were supposed to play on this floor last year, but as we said, North Carolina Central hit badly by the COVID bug last year, had to cancel last minute, and the game was never played. Yeah, and also don't forget the same situation in terms of USC, how they had their own issues with COVID and all of the pauses that they had as well. And they had 11 of 13 players that ended up testing positive for COVID, and they missed 28 of their 32 practice days to start the season. That's not a good way to start <laughs> your campaign. White misfiring on the three, rebound, fought for, picked up by North Carolina Central. Here's Boone. Just to those toughness plays, those toughness areas, he says you've got to win the 50-50 balls in this game against North Carolina Central, and you got to take some charges and rebound as well. Here's Justin Wright in his first action of the game, missing the shot, and they call an offensive foul late. So they call a pushing foul from behind on Samuel Keita for North Carolina Central. That's his first. Yeah, I was blocked off. I could not so see I. exactly yeah. what happened there, but it was obviously just late. And you can tell it, they seem to be letting some physical play go on because I, I thought that could have been actually a call right there for two shots, but they're letting these guys play a little physical basketball right now. They certainly are. Here's Ganey, and, and back to White. Got North Carolina Central going to their version of their zone right now with a little bit of a trapping. Goodlow curls it in there. Mr. Goodlow is sixth point of the game for USC Upstate, which has its biggest lead of seven and four new Spartans ready to check in at the next opportunity. That was a great job by Mr. Goodlow right there, being able to get himself, get to the free throw line, and you can hurt zones by getting to the free throw line like that. Asante Price shooting 30% from downtown this year. He has his first points of the game. 6'5", junior from Columbia, South Carolina. Cuts it down to a five-point game. Yes, and that is a true high-level scorer right there. And what do you make of this defense here, Rich? Yeah, this is your another 2-3 type of zone that they've got right now. Now, they're not trapping like they did previously. Uh, and so... I think they're just trying to get Spartans off their rhythm offensively right now and try to give them a different look and see how they're going to respond. And some new subs come into the game for USC Upstate. Right now the Spartans have Ganey, Alves, Brazil, Aldrich, and Mozone. Shot clock at eight for Upstate to get a shot off, leading by five, 16-11, nearing the midway point of the first half. Four to shoot. Ganey has it. 
Beats the shot clock buzzer. Actually, he did not beat the buzzer. Missed the shot. It came up short. Never hit the rim until the uh, Spartans wedged it in between the uh, rim and the glass. Yes, and that was a nice possession for North Carolina Central in that zone. And you could see Spartans had a little difficulty trying to understand what was going to be the best way to penetrate that. Here's Price. Step back, jump shot, a oh, nice shot by Asante Price. You Tough see, shot, he made it look easy. Yeah, you can see how athletic he is and just how he, he's got the ability to get up very quickly. And obviously even on the fadeaway there, still able to make that mid-range jumper. Brazil, Alves back to Brazil. Good ball movement by Upstate. Trying to find the open man, there's Ganey. Eight to shoot. Oh. Bad pass, went out of bounds off of Upstate. Turnover number four on the Spartans. Uh, now there, I thought, I didn't think that was necessarily the bad pass, but previously, Brazil to Aldridge down low had him in perfect position at the low block, but threw it down to his feet, and it was a great job by Aldridge to be able to handle that and continue the offense, but obviously a turnover there. Yeah, good ball movement on that series. Almost too good. Inside pass, dunk attempt missed by Butler. He's fouled, and... Cameron Butler will head to the line and shoot two. He is a transfer from Cal State University, Dominguez Hills. And before that, played at San Bernardino Valley. 6'10 junior out of Chicago. Good, yeah, a lot of action on here, Division huh? two and went very strong. And great pass by Eric Boone there to be able to find Butler. Makes his first free throw. That's the first uh, make and attempt, for that matter, in the game by the Eagles here tonight. Butler, a 50% free throw shooter, averaging five points and four rebounds a game. And he goes two for two. All of a sudden, Rich, it's a one-point game here. Upstate's seven-point lead down to one. Yeah, and you can see North Carolina Central's changing their defense again with a little bit of half-court press there and then dropping back into a zone. And Spartans haven't been able to really get into position. Now that's a good spot right there to find Jordan Ganey. Ganey misfiring, rebound by Butler, and a reach-in foul from Josh Aldrich, uh, literally 94 feet from the hoop. <laughs> yes, and that's, that's not a good foul for Josh Aldrich. That's one of those situations where Coach Dickerson wants him just go back on defense. The rebound had been secured. Don't have a silly foul like that because – with his size, with Josh Aldrich's size, they're going to need that against somebody like Butler, and you can't be picking up silly fouls like that. So the Eagles can reclaim the lead here on this trip. Right now on a 6-0 run against USC Upstate. Price, that's a three. Fight for the rebound, Boone. Missing the shot inside, but he's fouled. He will head to the line and shoot two, a chance for the Eagles to reclaim the lead. Yeah, and Eric Boone is one of those players that I, I find that I think he's going to have a lot of success for Coach uh, Moten, especially in, in the MEAC. He's very active. Again, just what he can do, just you, you don't think that he's as quick as he is, uh, but he's got white, nice wide shoulders, and he can really get to, uh, to the rim whenever he wants to. And, just think, I mean, just from that rebound perspective, I mean, he's second on the team, or first on the team uh, in assists, so he's not only able to get rebounds, but also he can find open players as well. He's a uh, good free throw shooter, 79% of the year. Last year played at Georgia Southern as he goes one of two at the stripe. He played at Georgia Southern, which came in here and beat Upstate in early December of last year. And Upstate loses the ball out of bounds, and so a tie game. It's 16 apiece and a chance for the Eagles again to reclaim the lead. Here's Wright, stopped on the baseline with a double and a steal by Jalen Brazil. Two on one, Brazil missing, but he's fouled. He will shoot two. And that's several times that Spartan players have been able to get some easy looks right at the rim and just have not been able to finish. And you know that drives Coach Dickerson crazy because they had a great defensive play here by Brazil, being able to recognize uh, that Boone was in trouble there and just not able to finish the little bunny there. 
So Jalen Brazil at the line, 5'10 freshman. And uh, Coach Dickerson has said that uh, right now Brazil, he's going through the typical freshman year growing pains as he scores his first point. But he says about Brazil that he has uh, a will and a toughness that is just unmatched. Yeah, and that's the stuff you can't teach. Now, this was, this <laughs> Brazil was the 5A player of the year uh, last year as a senior in high school at Dorman, helping them win a state championship. So you know he's got the pedigree in terms of championship basketball. And again, that's the type of thing that you cannot teach. Shot clock inside of 10. Price shoots a three. Rebound ripped away by Aldridge for Upstate. Good box out by Aldridge. Here comes Brazil. In the, hand, the hands of Alves, collision, no call. Losing him in tight quarters this year. Yeah, and he said he's even had to learn how to coach again, so to speak, and has learned some other things about ways he could be a better coach and watching a lot more films, watching his games more often than he normally would. And I think that's just part of the maturation process of going through something like he did. And so, last year was so tough for virtually every college basketball team last season with COVID, uh, two shutdowns for Upstate last year due to COVID-19, especially in the preseason. And then we talked about North Carolina Central, uh, 48 straight days with no games or practices. I mean, that's just, that's hard to do. It really is. And knowing that also for North Carolina Central, they only played two games in November, two games in December as well. So that's not an opportunity where you can get in any type of flow at all. Uh, Justin Wright hit the line, an 84% free throw shooter, 12 of 14 on the year from the line, making 13 out of 15, his first two points of the game. We're tied again at 18. A little, again, half-court pressure here from North Carolina Central. See what Coach Dickerson said in the timeout there to be able to handle this type of press as they fall back to their zone again. Mozone, Aldrich in the corner, hits a three. Josh Aldrich, his fourth three of the season, his first points of the game, upstate by three. And I think Coach Dickerson told him just that. The way to hurt a zone there is if you can find somebody right there at the free throw line, then you've got a vantage point where you can pass in either direction and find the open man, which Mozone was able to do, finding Aldrich in the corner. I think we might have a clock issue that they're fixing. I don't think we had a foul. I think they had to adjust the uh, shot clock a little bit here. So Justin Wright will inbound for North Carolina Central. Here's Eric Boone. Played at Georgia Southern last year. Now playing for North Carolina Central and Lavelle Moten. And a reach-in foul called on Nick Alves. And that's his second. And Eric Boone playing for one of Coach Moten's former assistants, Brian Berg. That's right. So North Carolina Central, Rich, a shooting 29% uh, so far, 5 of 17 from the field. Uh, what do you think North Carolina Central needs to do here to get some points going? Yeah, I think in all honesty right now, it's just they haven't been able to knock down some of the shots. They've been getting some good looks. They just haven't been able to. Uh, you know, have those fall for them. They're still very active in terms of, you know, on the glass and, you know, not in a situation where they're getting out-rebounded. I mean, we're, right now the rebounds are even 12 apiece for each team. So you'd have to be uh, very happy if you're Coach Moten that you're sitting here only down two points and shooting the way that you are. Justin Wright at the line, uh, averaging seven points a game. Excellent free throw shooter, 84%, like we said. He's from Greenville, North Carolina. And he goes two for two. He has four points of the game, four for four overall at the line. Upstate's lead is down to one at 21-20. How about this uh, trapping defense across half court? Yes, and you can see it's, it's getting a situation where now you know, the Spartans are going to be in, a, in that type of situation where the shot clock is going to be running down each time they actually try to get in a, an effective offense but there again you get close to that elbow top of the key free throw line you can find the open man in that zone and 
there again. Dalvin White was able to find Mozone there for the three. Mozone beats the zone with that three. He has six points of the game, both from uh, both shots going in from three-point range. Here is Boone on the attack, and down it goes. Eric Boone with his first field goal. He has three points. Upstate's lead is two, 24-22. We're inside of six minutes to go in the opening half of play. Here's Dalvin White, senior point guard for this team, coming off the bench for Upstate tonight and a turnover on Upstate, number six in the game. Good hands there by Justin Wright, being able to step into that passing lane. He right. wasn't able to finish, though. Yeah, can't finish. It crawls off the rim, and the rebound by Cartier Jernigan for USC Upstate, getting some early playing time in this game tonight. Alves lost it. Nope, out of bounds, they say, off of North Carolina Central. Not much of a big flow in this game so far. Both the teams uh, just kind of trying to figure each other out. I think so, too. Yeah, it has been kind of stop and start uh, for both teams. And Coach Dickerson had talked about, you know, Cartier Jernigan is a guy that's probably going to get a lot more playing time as he's finally getting healthy and uh, getting some, you know, better understanding of the offense and, you know, uh, from what he's wanting to be able to accomplish even on the defensive side as well. So it's good to see him out on the court. Mozone, contact, foul, and he will shoot two. Yes, Cameron Butler was not moving there. <laughs> it was like a brick wall as Mozone found out pretty quickly. Oh, excuse me, that's actually Chris Monroe there. That was the brick wall. So the line is uh, Bryson Mozone, 72% free throw shooter, averaging uh, 14 points a game. He had 11 points and three made three-pointers against Furman on Saturday. Misses that uh, first free throw. And uh, Rich, this is a guy that uh, Coach Dave Dickerson said when the season started, uh, he's playing now for the right reasons. He really worked on his game to try and help himself out and the team be better this year. Yeah, and they're going to lean on him quite a bit. I mean, he's that guy you know, coming in a, a, as a senior, leading the team in scoring, and fantastic play there by Cartier Jernigan, again, just quick hands. But Bryson Mozone is the guy that can give them a spark anytime just with his shooting capabilities. But a lot of times it's defense that gets the team going first. Just like that defensive play right there, picked up by Alves and alertly calls a quick 30-second timeout. Good diving and hustle plays. That's one thing that Coach Dickerson said this team needs to do. Needs to win the hustle plays, the toughness plays, get to those 50-50 balls, and Nick Alves and the Spartans did just that. And nice heads-up play by Alves there because he knew he was probably going to be in a situation where it would be a jump ball and just a fantastic opportunity. It all starts with defense, and right there with Cartier Jernigan, just quick hands against Eric. Eric Boone and being able to get the steal and the two points. So wise uh, decision by Nick Alves. Uh, uses that uh, use it or lose it. That's right. 30 second timeout. It keeps uh, the possession alive for USC Upstate. Up five, 27 to 22. And a uh, coach Dickerson said before the game or before the season that uh, he really likes the team chemistry with this team early on. Uh, only two wins so far, but uh, you see signs of this team getting better. It's early in the season right now, and there is that aspect of you know how do you build team chemistry? It's in certain situations where you go through some adversity, but you come back from that, obviously, like that Furman game. You could have been easily blown out there based on how that first half went, but they stuck together as a team and played really well in that second half. And you can see right now just even coming together on the defensive side and having a spark, a different type of energy right now here in the Hodge Center. Miller, that's a deep three. Rims out on him. Rebound by Alves for Upstate. Into the hands of Jernigan. Upstate's lead is five. It has been up as many as seven points in this game. Aldrich hits a three. Josh Aldrich is second three of the game. He has six, and Upstate has its biggest lead of eight. And a lot of people don't understand that that shot that is a shot that Aldrich makes quite a bit and he can definitely step out there and obviously his teammates know that he can and so does coach Dickerson uh, good hands by Jernigan knocks it away Caldwell shot clock inside of 10 Caldwell down the lane hangs in the air off the mark rebound upstate and they want to run 
Yeah, now I think they'll pull it back out. Just seeing they didn't have numbers, and that's great leadership by Dalvin White right there. Finding Mozone in the corner, just not able to hit it. Alves, offensive rebound, and he's fouled, and Nick Alves will head to the line and shoot two. He got the rebound. You also never hear a coach say, son, you rebound too much. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> and again, here, this is what I like about Dalvin White. He's got the experience there. Realized, didn't have numbers. Let's, let's get back to the uh, free throw line, center of the court there, and being able to find the open guy. And obviously, nice job by Nick Alves to be able to crash the boards and, and get to the free throw line. And again, uh, this young man uh, exploded in the second half against Furman Saturday. Scored all 16 of his points in the second half. Seven of eight from the field in 19 minutes of play. And this is a redshirt sophomore that Coach Dickerson is really high on. Thinks he's going to be really good. He makes the free throws there. Upstate leads it 31-22. Miller on the drive, and he draws the cover. Randy Miller, he has seven points. He averages 11 a game for this team. Upstate's lead is eight as we approach three minutes remaining in the first half. And now North Carolina Central's going back to their man, but picking up point guard full court there, trying to make the Spartans work some of their shot clock before they get into their offense. Aldrich hit a three earlier in this game. He hit two threes, actually. Shot for three, missed by Jernigan as he was off balance. Rebound by North Carolina Central. Here's Caldwell running the point for the Eagles of North Carolina Central out of the MIAC. And drawing the contact is Miller. He's fouled. He was uh, shooting threes earlier in the game to start the, the ball game rich and hit two of them. Now he's going inside. Yeah, and that's not a bad thing for Miller because uh, knowing that he's basically shooting just under 30%, so I think it is an aspect of what I talked about. You don't have to rely on the three. Try to get to the free throw line. Try to get some uh, easy drives and see if you can pick up the fouls. But at the end of the day, you get to the free throw line, you've got to make them. And unfortunately right now for Randy Miller, he's not. And he's a 73% free throw shooter on the season, so this is somewhat of some rare misses for him at the free throw line. He has eight. The lead is seven for Upstate. And now a little light full court pressure in the backcourt by North Carolina Central. Coach Moten has really mixed up his defense as well in this game, going man, two, three zone, little press, and there's an offensive foul. Moving screen on USC Upstate. And they go back the other way. Yeah, you can see Katarius Smith there. Just never really got set, uh, shifting there, trying to help his teammate out. Just uh, a little too anxious there. So the five on the floor for North Carolina Central. And right now, Maltzby, Caldwell, Miller, Price, and Butler. And for the Spartans, it's Brazil, White, Aldrich, Jernigan, and Smith. Maltzby on the drive, offensive foul. They call the charge on Maltzby. Good defense, sliding over to take the charge was upstate, and they go back the other way. Yeah, and this is, again, just quick feet, and Jernigan's just all over the place. And he had good position, but he was moving, but it was the extension of the arm there by Maltzby that gets the offensive call. Jernigan. Slips it inside to Smith for the jam. His second basket of the game. He has four points, and Upstate has his biggest lead of the game of nine. And that's why Jernigan's going to get more and more playing time because he was unselfish there. He could have easily gone up with a little bit of floater there, but nice pass with his left hand. And then Kyderia Smith goes up strong and finishes with a left hand. And that's the explosiveness that I love with uh, Kyderia Smith. And I think it's a situation where you know, if he can really understand how he should be playing within Coach Dickerson's team, I think he's going to get some more minutes. Alex Caldwell at the line, only a 55% free throw shooter, has a three-pointer in this game and leaves that one short. Uh, Caldwell last year played in six games, averaged 10 minutes a game, three points a game, played two years at Southeast Missouri State, had a good career there, and then transferred to North Carolina Central. Six foot senior knocks it down. 
He has four points in the game now. The lead is eight for Upstate. And again, here comes light pressure in the backcourt. And we have a foul? I, I didn't yes, see. we have a foul on Randy Miller there, it looks like. I didn't see much. It's his first foul. Yeah, and I'm not certain of what that call was as well. See if we've got replay here. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. He did. Yes. Uh, okay. He he put the yeah, you can't do the that. chicken wing out there, the elbow, yeah. and uh, the ref was right there on it. And you could tell the ref was looking at him. He did not like what he saw there. Jernigan needs help. Oh, dangerous pass. That was very dangerous. Yes, it was, and Eric Boone just missed that. Shot clock at six. Here's Aldrich. Long two missed. Rebound Price on the other end for NC Central. Down eight. Minute 16 to go in the first half. And that's not Aldrich's shot there coming off a dribble. He's much more of a catch and shoot, not off the dribble type of shooter. Miller has good range. He goes inside instead. Off the mark. Butler on the follow. His first basket, his fourth point. Lead is six for Upstate inside one minute to go in the first half. And if you're North Carolina Central, this is what you wanted. Just can you get it within five points before halftime? And I think they're you know right in that situation. Now can they play good defense? Brazil short on the three. Rebound Butler, but he stepped out of bounds. So the possession is uh, retained by USC Upstate up six. And now on the flip side for USC Upstate, this is a situation where on this possession, I, I think you want to look at using a little bit more clock, run that down, and get a good offensive set here to get a score. Here's Smith working against Price. Draws the double and a turnover on Smith and Upstate. And in this game, just with their defense as well. And, you know, when you see those type of situations where we just had that turnover there, that's what's allowed them to stay within, you know, under 10 points. And again, now if you can reduce this to four points or three before halftime, you're in a great spot for North Carolina Central. At a three second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, 10 to shoot, 13 to go in the first half. Backdoor pass to Price. Inside Butler, lost it, three to shoot. Miller, that's a deep three. And the weak side rebound, saved out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds off of Upstate with .6 seconds to go for NC Central to get a shot off before the halftime break. And they'll inbound near the corner. Price will inbound. Point six to go, enough time to catch and shoot. There's the catch, there's the shot by Miller, puts it in at 0-5 on the road this year, uh, playing a very busy schedule. They played Saturday, Monday, playing tonight, and uh, trying to get that first road win of the year. Only down three, though, here at the start of the second half as Caldwell rises and fires in along two. His second basket is sixth point of the game. And there's a great start here in the second half for Caldwell. And that was a little bit better in the offensive flow there. It's a one-point game. Upstate has its biggest lead of nine and a technical foul called, I believe, on yeah, I think NC on, Central. I think it's on Coach Moten. I didn't see exactly what he did, but... I think he might have been extended out of that coach's box there, almost coming to half court. So Ganey to shoot the technicals. For the uh, one shot technical, I should say. That's his uh, third point of the game. And if you're a USC Spartan fan, you are happy that Upstate was leading at halftime because this, so far this season, they are 2-0 and when leading at halftime. Mozone backing in, goes to that turnaround shot, and fighting for the offensive rebound was good low, but it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with USC Upstate. That's what the, the Coach Dickerson talked about, the hustle plays, the yes. toughness plays. Uh, 
Won that battle right there to keep the possession alive for USC Upstate. Reach in foul on Caldwell. And that's his second. And that's the quickness of Brazil right there, being able to quick one-step dribble and explode. And Caldwell just wasn't able to move his feet fast enough. It's a good low to inbound again. Finds Brazil, the freshman, explodes down the lane. Another reach-in foul. This one's on Price. That's his second. And that's tough to defend when you have an offensive guy that can get their hips in front of you going downhill like that, and that's, that's very tough, and a lot of times you are going to pick up that foul. And a bad pass on the inbounds play out of bounds. Turnover number 10 on USC Upstate. So here come the Eagles. Coming off a 30-point loss at a Big South school on Saturday at Gardner-Webb, trying to bounce back against another Big South school here tonight in USC Upstate. Caldwell missing the three and over the back rebounding foul called on Aldrich. A lot of fouls here in the first uh, minute plus here in the second half. Yeah, talking about not getting in, being able to get into a rhythm. We're definitely got a lot of start and stop here and just a push off there by Aldrich on that rebound. So here's Miller. Hit a big three to beat the halftime buzzer to end the first half. He draws the contact. Blocking foul called on Aldrich of Upstate. That's his third. Randy Miller will head of the line and shoot two. And it looked like there that... Not only was Aldrich still moving, but he might have been in that restricted area as well. So it was going to be an automatic blocking call. Uh, Randy Miller at the line, uh, one of the few uh, returnees of this uh, North Carolina Central team. And uh, Coach Moten said before the game that this year, as compared to past years, Randy Miller is having to adjust to being the number one guy on the team this year. He now leads the team in scoring. And he says that uh, Miller has to play at a quick pace to get his shot off. And so far, he's made a three threes in this game, including the halftime buzzer beater from the top of the key to beat the first half buzzer. And this is in his sixth year now and his second stint at North Carolina Central. Uh, transferred from North Carolina Central to Indiana State and then now back. North Carolina Central. So he does know this system, but he just doesn't know all of these players, and it's going to take a little bit of time to, to get to know these guys as we see this extended half-court trap now by North Carolina Central trying to create some conflict, and they're able to do that a little bit there. Yeah, kicked ball by Price, and the shot clock will reset to 20. Upstate led by as many as nine in the first half. And led by three at the break. Now the lead is one as Goodlow tries to slice his way down the lane, splits the defense, and he is fouled. He's fouled by Upstate, and it'll stay with the Eagles. Ganey in the lane, left it short. Smith, the offensive rebound. He can't connect, and the rebound by North Carolina Central. And both teams right now are struggling a little bit on the offensive side. You can see both defenses are creating some conflict and some chaos for the offense. Caldwell off the mark on that three and hits the extension above the backboard, and it goes back over to USC Upstate. Now, it seems that Caldwell has got the green light after making that first shot to open the second half. He's not afraid right there at the top of the yeah, key. He, he's not now, been bashful. No, and I'm just not <laughs> certain that that's the shot that Coach Moten wants. And another defensive turnover there. Here's Maltzby driving inside. He draws the contact. Blocking foul called on USC Upstate. That's on Goodlow. And that's his third. So Marquis Maltzby. Well, head of the line, 6'3", junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Right next to Durham, North Carolina, which is where North Carolina Central University is. Maltzby's a transfer from the University of New Hampshire. 
He uh, averages seven points a game, had four points in the loss to Gardner-Webb back on Monday night. And I talked to uh, Coach Moten before the game. I said, you guys have had a busy schedule. He says, oh, it's been brutal. <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, says it's been brutal. That's needless to say, yes. <laughs> and I think that's putting it lightly. Very lightly, yes. But, again, I think this is one of those situations where this is how you can learn. This is how you can get better as a team and understanding, you know, going through some of these adverse situations. It's only going to help you come conference time. Uh, good deflection out of bounds off of NC Central. And, you know, a lot of guys want to play at the next level in the NBA. Well, uh, they're playing an NBA-type schedule. Let's see what you got, right? That's right. Yeah, get used to it. This is what it would be like every other night basically playing. Smith against Butler. Ten to shoot. Alves fouled by Butler, and that's his second. And he will head of the line and shoot two. So Nick Alves uh, had one point in the first half, and you know, Coach Dickerson told us this week before the game, Richmond, that uh, you know, Alves, he does things for this team that nobody else could do. His length, his athleticism, he really likes this young man's future. Yeah, I think so too. And I, you can see some of that obviously on display last game against Furman in the second half, having that career high, 16 points of seven of eight shooting from the field. That's going to get anybody's attention and especially an opportunity to get some more playing time. And so I think the, the future can be very bright for Nick Alves. All three of his points coming from the free throw line in this game and upstate has a two-point lead with two and a half minutes gone by here in the second half of play. Miller, quick first step, explodes to the rim, and he's fouled, and he will shoot two as well. And it seems right now that both offenses are playing in quicksand because it has become a slow game right now with these fouls that we're seeing, and uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of rhythm at all or any type of flow here in the beginning of the second half. So Miller at the line, and uh, Richmond, you talked about it earlier, the uh, journey for Randy Miller. Played in 2016-17. Uh, he played at Mount St. Mary's 2017-18, went Juco, Moberly Community College in Missouri. And then 2019-20, uh, played at NC Central. He's kind of been a, a nomad for this team. Yeah, he sure has. He, he goes over two. Yeah, struggling at the free throw line tonight. He's hitting the threes. Well. He's just missing the freebies at the foul stripe. Good hands by Maltzby out of bounds. It stays with Upstate. Upstate by two, 17.07 to go. And you can see Upstate's having a little trouble right now with this defense that North Carolina Central's employing. Coach Moten going to changing it up a little bit. And Having some trapping now back to man-to-man. -to -man. I think that's why you see Dalvin White out there to be that floor general for Coach Dickerson and the Spartans. White whips it in the corner. Ganey's three is short. Offensive rebound, Mozo. White, Mozo, open, three. His third three of the game. He has ten points, and Upstate's lead is five. And you can just see a completely different frame of mind there for Mozon just catch and shoot and that's what he's so skilled at and again led by Dalvin White just being able to orchestrate the offense there and get good ball movement. Miller doubled needs help and that's oh they call a reach in foul on Alves and that's his third. At this pace, in the second half of fouls, we may not have any players left. I know. That's what I'm talking about. Just the, the pace of play has come to a screeching halt here in the second half. With We didn't see as many fouls being called. They allowed them to be a little bit more physical in the first play. half. Yeah. yeah, they really did. And now we're seeing some, I wouldn't say ticky-tack fouls, but just not consistent from what we saw in the first half. Well, they are fouling. They are <laughs> fouling, yes. That's, yes. That, I guess that's my we're, point. We're is seeing that. some contact, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, there, there was definitely a foul right there, but in the first half, that may or may not have been called. Caldwell skips it over. Boltzby's three. Rebound ripped away by Kydarius Smith for Upstate. He got high for that one. Here comes White. 
White steams on the dribble to the glass. Uh, can't bank it in. And the rebound by North Carolina Central. It has numbers. Five on four. In the corner, Caldwell. Offensive rebound, Price. And he puts it in. Up in the area. He went to college there. Uh, the school has been loyal to him, and he's been loyal to the school. It's been a good marriage. Yeah, it's one of those fantastic stories that you see, not only from a player to assistant coach to head coach, and not only just being able to make that transition, but the success that he's had. He's also been you know, the uh, NABC District 15 Coach of the Year before as well and a finalist for the National Coach of the Year, Hugh Durham, on the top mid-major coaches. So he's obviously had a lot of success as well. Jernigan beats the buzzer, misses the shot, and the rebound by North Carolina Central. Here's Caldwell, hit a three a moment ago to cut into that upstate lead. Monroe driving, score the basket and one. Chris Monroe, his first two of the game, and he'll head of the line for one. It's a great job by Monroe. They're recognizing that the defense was back on their heels and being able to get to the basket there and go up strong and take the physical contact there. So at the line, Chris Monroe. And Coach Moten says he's still learning how to play this game at this level, and he says he needs to not just fall in love with shooting the three. He needs to drive to the basket more. He did on that possession. This is the uh, foul shot, though. And the rebound by Upstate. Jatavius Watson into the game. He's fouled. He will shoot two. And vice versa, same thing for Jatavius Watson there, being able to recognize he's got the defense on his hip and can try to get to the basket there. And if he can't score, pick up the foul, which he did. Uh, here's uh, Jatavius Watson. Uh, limited playing time so far this year. He's averaged uh, 1.2 rebounds a game. He's only a 33% free throw shooter, 4 of 12. Uh, he'll shoot two here. And made that no problem. Yes, he did. That's his first point of the game. And he just checked in. That's an instant Co offense off the bench. Coming off cold off the bench, it didn't matter. That's what we talked about. If you can have the opportunity of getting to the free throw line, you've got to take advantage of it. And it's obviously a, somewhat of a obvious situation when I make, I mean, an obvious statement when I make that in terms of, yeah, you've got to hit your free throws. We know that. But it's a lot of times players aren't able to. Price for three. Rebound skied for by Cartier Jernigan. He skied high for that one. Jernigan running the break in the corner. Ganey three, no. Rebound by North Carolina Central. And Caldwell wants to push down the lane. Contact, no call. Tap up, missed twice by Price. Caldwell blocked, taken by Upstate. You see there, it seemed to be a little bit of physical contact that the refs let them play on that time. Oh, and a bad pass into the backcourt, and that'll be over and back by Upstate. Turnover number 12. It seems like both teams uh, are trying to force things a little too much here in the last minute or so. Uh, agreed, and you can see right there, obviously, with Mozone just getting trapped down too far down low, and obviously, great situation here by Watson with the block and getting out in transition for the Spartans there, but the turnover turns it back over to NC Central. Now, Coach Moten's over there a little frustrated with Eric Boone there, not, not being crisp with his passes there. Here's Maltzby, picked up by White into Monroe's hands. That's a three. Out of bounds, it'll stay with NC Central. And we just talked about what Coach Moten had mentioned about uh, Chris Monroe. You don't have to settle for the three, and that was a settle for the three. He didn't give a chance to get in offensive flow, and he had a much better opportunity, and that was such a long three-point shot anyway as we have another foul that's called. And now one-on-one one free throws yeah, coming up difference. with the 13-39 mark left in the game. One-on-one and one free throws and a bonus free throws the rest of the way for NC Central. As that's the seventh team foul on USC Upstate. Uh, NC Central has five team fouls here in the second half. At the line is Eric Boone. And this is the front end. White to Ganey for three. 
Out of bounds to the Eagles. Ganey is struggling tonight from an offensive perspective. Obviously, yeah. we've seen him coming in, shooting really well, not only from the field, but shooting 55% from beyond the arc as well. But remember, this is freshman life. You can have those ups and downs as a yeah. true freshman. Yeah, Coach Dickerson talked about it, the growing pains of freshman seasons. Uh, Jalen Brazil also kind of going through that stretch right now for USC Upstate. The season's early still, though. I mean, this is only game number seven for Upstate, game number eight for North Carolina Central. Both teams trying to figure out what they have here this year. The shot fake by Monroe. That's a three. No. Put back attempt missed by Maltzby. And there's Boone on the follow. And I can tell you right now, North Carolina Central is owning the offensive glass right now, and it's becoming a detriment for the Spartans. And Jatavius Watson throws down a jam, his first basket, all four of his points coming after the halftime break. He hasn't played much in the last few games for Upstate, but really giving his team a boost here in the second half off the bench. Upstate by three. And reach in foul on Watson. That's his second, and again, free throws coming up. Bonus, one and one for the Eagles. And that's what you can't do if you come down, have a nice finish on the dunk there by Watson, but you can't have a situation where you have a silly foul out of the top of the key the way Watson did there, especially knowing that you're in the one and one situation, and why are you trying to guard somebody that far out when you need to get back inside and be ready for defense? Uh, Boone makes the free throw. He's another uh, nomad for this team. Boone played three years ago at Tallahassee Community College, two years ago at John A. Logan College, last year Georgia Southern, this year North Carolina Central. It's hard to keep up with all these guys where they're going. It really <laughs> is. And I know, you know it's, it's been an opportunity for some of these, uh, you know, mid-major programs and low-major programs to utilize the transfer portal, but it does have its downside as well, and that's can you get some team chemistry and consistency, and it's hard to do that. Good ball movement by Upstate. White into the lane. The floater goes for Dalvin White, and that's his second basket, his fifth point of the game. And that's what he's so good at is being able to uh, be able to dribble penetrate and break down the defense and with that little floater of his. Miller, his floater, short, rebound, upstate, good low. Into the hands of Dalvin White, senior point guard, directing this team on the point. White for three, book it for Dalvin White, his second three. He has eight points, and the lead is up to six for upstate. And he's making sure everybody was counting the same way he was as he's counting out one, two. I remember being a student manager at Clemson, and I remember... Coach Dickerson playing for Maryland, and unfortunately for Coach Dickerson, he missed a game-winning shot against the Clemson Tigers one year. Asante Price with a steal and a basket. He has eight. Upstate's lead is four at 48-44. This is one of those grinded-out type of games, lots of fouls, and a little start-stop, start-stop action here all night tonight, but both teams playing hard. Here's Goodlow for three, just rims out on him, and a rebound by Justin Wright. Right, uh, contact, no call. The Dodge Center, a back and forth game. Um, uh, USC Upstate has led virtually the entire way. Leads by four right now, 48-44, nearing the midway point of the second half of play. Monroe trying to work on Jatavius Watson, shot clock at five. Boone rises, fires, missing the three. Rebound by Ganey. As he tight ropes, oh no, he steps out of bounds and it goes back to the Eagles. And this is one of those games as a freshman for Ganey that he's just having a tough time getting any type of flow, obviously not being able to really connect the way he has over the first six games of the season from the field. And sometimes it just carries over as a true freshman, just a learning learning process that happens in any freshman season. Miller, Monroe, that's a three. Way off the mark and goes out of bounds. Also a shot clock violation, either way a turnover. Number 11 on the Eagles.
Here comes Dalvin White. As he plays catch back and forth with Jernigan. Jernigan getting a lot of playing time tonight as opposed to the first uh, few games of the year. Yeah, and we had talked to Coach Dickerson, and he had mentioned that it looked like Jernigan was going to be on track to be able to get some more playing time. As a good low has his fourth basket of the game, his eighth point, upstate by six as we go under 10 minutes to go. And another player with Mr. Goodlow being able to get some more playing time as well coming off of that ACL injury last year. And a blocking foul. It's on the floor. It's on Jernigan. That's his third. But one and one free throws coming up again for Eric Boone and North Carolina Central. And North Carolina Central would probably be in the lead in this game if they could connect from the free throw line a little bit better. 14 to 24 right now for yeah. North Carolina Central. And that's obviously a difficult situation when you're shooting 58% and knowing that this is an opportunity for the last 10 minutes, you're going to be going to the free throw line in a bonus situation. You've got to be able to connect. That's eight points for Boone. Now, we talked about how he played at Georgia Southern last year, averaged 11 points, three boards, three assists. So this year, averaging eight points and four rebounds. Had uh, eight points and seven boards in the loss two nights ago at Gardner Webb. Yeah, and I like his activity coming into this game just from an offensive rebound standpoint. 11 of his 28 rebounds have been on the offensive side of things, and that's good production, being very active on the offensive glass. White, too strong, rebound by Nicholas Fennell, who has uh, played sparingly so far here tonight, played a little bit in the first half, and now in here in half number two. Here's Boone as he plays catch back and forth with Price. Five-point lead for USC Upstate, approaching nine minutes to go. Boone draws the contact, and he'll go to the line again. It's on Dalvin White, and uh, that's only his first foul. And now double bonus free throws the rest of the way. That's ten team fouls on Upstate, so double bonus the rest of the way. Here for North Carolina Central, but Boone misses another. And this will make it more difficult for both teams to get into some type of rhythm, pace of play as well. will slow down significantly because each time now you're shooting two free throws regardless, made or miss. Nine points for Boone. That was the 28th free throw attempted by NC Central in this game. They go to that quirky defense in a half-court set. Reach-in foul called on right, and that's his first. Hey, in a game like this where it's start-stop, a lot of fouls, kind of choppy both ways, you, you had, do you try and force yourself to play like the way you want to play, or do you have to let the game come to you? Yeah, I think it's a mixture, to be honest with you, because you now are in a situation, especially for if you're North Carolina Central, now I would force the issue for the Spartans to be able to guard you in a certain way. You might want to have a little bit more dribble penetration opportunities than you would just straight ball movement opportunities. And just like that with Boone going straight to the hole, because I think that might, might be a situation in different terms where you actually pull the ball back and try to get into an offensive flow. But knowing that you've got the defense back on their heels right there, you know the situation, you've got good low and a bad defensive position, why not go ahead and and try to create you know, opportunity to get to the free throw line, just like. He's now in double figures. He's in double figures with 10. Uh, he was uh, quite the stud basketball player in high school. He's uh, from Lexington, Kentucky. He was a finalist for Mr. Basketball in Kentucky his senior year. Makes both there. He has 11. That was the 30th free throw attempted by North Carolina Central in this game. It's down to a two-point game. As the Spartans try and get a read on this defense by the Eagles, Ganey, the freshman, back in the game to the senior White. Ganey rises, fires, and a three. Jordan Ganey's first three of the game. And Upstate's lead is back up to five. And there's that roller coaster ride you have with a freshman. <laughs> being able to connect there on the three-point shot. And that was a big shot for Jordan Ganey to be able to, 
to finish that beyond the arc. The give and go, and Price lays it in. Pretty play by North Carolina Central. Makes it a one-possession game again inside eight minutes to go. White is trapped, splits the defense to Ganey. Alves on the drive. The floater crawls off the lip. And the rebound by the Eagles. Here's Eric Boone. Oh, nice move down the baseline. Scores another two. 13 points, tying his career high in a North Carolina Central uniform, and it's a one-point game. That was a very quick crossover there, and being able to utilize how his quickness and get to the basket and finish. Mozone in the middle of that zone, drops it in for two. Bryson Mozone now with 12. That's the way Coach Dickerson wants that offense to run right there. And great job by not only Mozone being able to flash right there at the free throw line, but Ganey to be able to see that and get the ball to him. Little weave action, top of the key, right. Got his own board. Shot blocked by Aldridge, shut down. One possession game and a turnover. Stepping out of bounds was Price. Turnover number 12. And those are the things that drive coaches crazy. I could see the body language with Coach Moten, <laughs> Coach Moten over there and <laughs> just, he just put his head down and just couldn't, it's almost like disbelief. Steal by North Carolina Central. Tight roping the sideline is right and now he breaks through. In the corner, Price. That would have tied the game. Weak side rebound by Upstate. Here's Dalvin White. Turns on the juice and the Jets in the corner. Mo zones three, way off the mark. Aldrich, offensive rebound. Score the basket and one. And ahead of the line for a free throw. Josh Aldrich again just being so active on the glass and not just on the glass, but just everywhere. And with him, the way he's been able to play again on the offensive side, Coming into this game, he's got 27 rebounds on the season, but 14 of them are on the offensive glass. And that's why you're seeing him being so productive is because he can be very active there on the offensive side. Coach Dave Dickerson calls Aldrich the smartest player on the team, talks well on defense, gets guys to go to where they need to be on the floor. Yeah, on the defensive side of things, completes the three-point play. He has nine points. And Upstate's lead is doubled from three to six. Under six to go. And a reach in foul called on Ganey. That's his third. And that's another situation just drives coaches crazy that you foul a guy that far out. And I know Ganey's a freshman and still learning, but that's a situation where just drop back just a little bit. You, you know you don't have to extend the defensive pressure out that far, and especially how the game's being called right now. They're calling a lot of the physical contact, which they weren't in the first half, so players have to adjust, and a lot of times the freshmen, they don't really read that yet uh, in their tenure and have to go through a little bit longer playing time to understand that. Miller makes both. He has 14 points. 32 free throws attempted by NC Central in this game. Upstate has attempted 14. And NC Central is coming into this game only averaging 17 attempts from the free throw line. So it's almost been doubled. Yes. White needs help. Finds Ganey. Ganey on the drive. Uh, lost it on the way up. Rebound. Fought for. Picked up by NC Central. Here's Boone. Boone again driving to the lane. Contact, no call. Butler scores. Cameron Butler is sixth point of the game, and the lead is down to two. I think we're going to get a timeout by Coach Dickerson here. I think all college coaches, if they take one positive out of the COVID situation, is that they don't have to wear suit and ties anymore on the <laughs> sidelines. <laughs> Jernigan, oh, nice play. Lays it in. Fantastic up and under there move by Jernigan. Lead is up to four, inside five minutes to go. Here's Boone again. He's been very active here in the second half, driving to the basket, forcing fouls on Upstate. Price, Fidel, and now to Miller. Shot clock at 10. Price, a deep three. 
Rebound, Jernigan for Upstate. It was a great job by Coach Dickerson with the 30-second timeout. Switch defense, go to a zone there, and a lot of times you lose the ability of rebounding in a zone, but great job by the Spartans there to still stay on the positive side of rebounding. Mozone misses that three, but out of bounds off of NC Central. Jernigan to inbound to the baseline and finds Aldrich. White in the corner, Jernigan. Too strong, here comes Boone, it's one on three. Boone all the way, left hand, score the basket and one. And Eric Boone points 14 and 15 and a chance for 16 coming up at the line. And you can see just Boone has taken over right now just in terms of being so aggressive on the offensive side in transition and not waiting. Even though it's a two on one type of situation, he knows that he can get to the rim and obviously have an opportunity of drawing the foul. North Carolina Central uh, only shooting Richmond 32% uh, for the game, but making up for it at the foul line. The team is 20 of 32, and attempts number 33 coming up here at the line for Eric Boone and North Carolina Central out of the MEAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. School located in Durham, North Carolina. Right there in the triangle. And Boone completes the three-point play. He has 16. 21 for 33 are the Eagles at the line in this game. One-point game. And this half-court trap has definitely given Spartan some difficult situations right now. So great job by Coach Moten. He throws based on what we've seen so far. And I think one of the big things for North Carolina Central, they've done a much better job of getting to the rim and getting points in the paint. They were outscored 12 to two there in the first half, but now have cut that to 24 to 18 points in the paint, still favoring the Spartans though. White off the mark of the three, weak side rebound by Fennell. And a chance for North Carolina Central, despite shooting only 32% of the game, a chance to take the lead. Yeah, but when you go to the free throw line over 30 times in a game, you're going to have these opportunities. And just imagine if they would have been able to hit many more of their free throws as they do take that lead. And Nicholas Fennell scores his first two and the first lead of the game for North Carolina Central on 61-60, approaching three minutes to go in this close defensive slugfest game. Aldrich, corner, three. Out of bounds off of North Carolina Central, stays with Upstate underneath. It's a good low into the game for Upstate, and Nick Alves will have a seat. Yeah, and I think this is the time there with Mr. Goodlow, even though he's got four fouls, you've got to get him in the game. You're going to need some of his experience. Ozone, Goodlow. Down the lane, and he draws the contact of the foul. And Mozone, he'll shoot, uh, I think it's one and one free throws. I think he was fouled on the floor. I think he and, was, too. Yeah, fouled on the floor. Uh, this young man, Richmond, he blew out his knee five games into the year last year. I think you were on the call for that yes. game against Winthrop. That's right. The conference opener last year. Uh, just nice to see him back and healthy again this year. It really is, and you can see what type of player he is. I mean, just how aggressive he is and physical he is. That He can you know, take a ball off the dribble right there and try to get to the rim and a lot of contact, it, but didn't bump him off. He still had an opportunity to try to score and then being able to convert at the free throw line makes him a very dangerous player, but he does have four fouls, so he's got to play smart these last you know, little over two minutes here. And Coach Dickerson, after the first couple of games of the year, he said... Uh, Mr. Goodlow had been, at that point, the uh, most consistent player on the team, and he's coming off a, a tough ACL injury as he goes one for two on that one. And I think Butler stepped out of bounds, out of bounds. on the rebound. Oh, my yes. goodness. And the Spartans will get the ball back. Tied at 61, 248 to go. Every possession is so crucial right now under three minutes, and that's a tough spot for Cameron Butler to be in right there. Chance for Upstate to reclaim the lead back. Here's White, 10 to shoot. Goodlow, Ganey, 
three. Too strong rebound by North Carolina Central. Tied at 61, under two and a half to go. And that was a good look for Jordan Ganey. I thought it was in good rhythm, catch and shoot. Just wasn't able to, to knock it down. Here's Boone. And here in the second half. He doesn't want to be ejected right here in the last two minutes. White, ooh, almost lost it into the hands of Goodlow. Slips it inside. Aldrich for the jam, and the Spartans lead by two. That's the experience of bench when you're separated and spread out and not be able to have that communication that you normally have. All right, so NC Central with the ball down two, and a foul on Jordan Gain, the freshman. That's his fourth, and two free throws. Coming up here for NC Central, chance to tie the game. Yeah, I was going to be really surprised if they didn't call that because they've been calling that the entire second half. All so, yeah. yes, it would have been very surprising if they didn't, but it looked like one ref was actually going to let them play, but, but the other one had a different angle and made the call. It's, well, it's been uh, very consistent, that's for sure, as uh, Miller uh, drops in point number 15. That is the 34th free throw attempted by NC Central. Free throws have uh, kept the Eagles in the game, a chance to tie the game here. Miller with six, 15 points and make it 16, ties the game at 63, minute 48 to go. They've made more free throws than they've attempted field goals. So that just shows you how many times they have been to the free throw line. It's amazing. Good low. Ganey. Missing the three. Weak side rebound. Price, 90 seconds to go. Tie game at 63. You couldn't ask for a better shot from Jordan Ganey right there. I would have him shoot that all day long. He's just in his freshman slump just this one game. Hopefully he'll jump out of that pretty quickly. Now it's all about defense for the Spark. Coming up on a minute to go. And Coach Dickerson's just going to a straight man-to-man -man defense. Boone in the lane, creates and connects. He knocks in a two, 18 points in the game. Upstate down two with the ball inside of one minute. And you can see Coach Dickerson, he wants the offense to get going, get into a rhythm. Don't try to sit here and hold the ball and run the shot clock down. Just get into your normal offense right here. Good low, trying to create, under 10 to shoot. White in the corner, Mo zone, five to shoot. Ganey down the lane, contact. Yes, and you can tell, I don't think they were going to be too aggressive on that press. They just wanted to make it a, a little bit more difficult to get their, going in their offense, you have, make them have to use some of that shot clock. Miller, one-on-one -on -one against Ganey. Spins inside in the corner, Price for three. Weak side rebound, Fennell, 10 seconds to go. Shot clock now turned off, down to eight seconds. Boone on the drive, contact, no call, but he puts it in, 20 points. And it's North Carolina central ball. Inbound the ball safely here, the game is over. And that happened right in front of us, so we could see that perfectly. The inbound to Boone.